Welcome, well arrived everyone. Today we've got something cool to go over because we are going to go over and we're going to look and try to figure out which of the specs are going to find themselves in a better spot once they will be able to equip to legendaries. Of course, this is going to be a preliminary pass on this new feature because we are assuming many of us, many specs are going to be hoping that there is going to be some sort of balance tuning before the patch comes out. Balance tuning for spells and abilities of all of the specs and then balance tuning for the different legendaries, perhaps even balance tuning tied to covenants, covenant abilities, etc, etc. So it is very likely that many of these things are going to change. We have also gotten the tier sets announced and those are also very likely going to be tuned eventually so it is possible that some of these powerful combinations are going to be toned down and perhaps some of the specs that find themselves with some some more weaker combinations available to them are going to be buffed but for the moment this is what we have to work with so because there is a lot to go over we are going to split this into each category starting with the melee dps mostly because well number one they are the most numerous there is 13 different specs for the melee dps but also because currently and this has been going on since pretty much the start of the expansion but 9.1 made it even more clear at the moment melee dps are dominating the raid performance up to this point when eight out of ten of the better performing specs in red encounters are all completely covered by melee specs it you know it shows that they're doing quite well in mythic plus it is more balanced yes there are still very uh, effective melee dps specs that can be brought in there but the range dps are pulling their weight much more compared to what we have seen in the raid so we're going to be starting by looking at the melee dps and we're going to start in order so we're going to start from the currently possible shittiest combinations available to each of the specs simply because the two legendaries that you will be able to pair together don't really have any synergy perhaps because the covenant legendaries for your spec happen to be all weak therefore even if you pair them together with another one it still ends up being a poor combination and then we're gonna keep rising and rising as we will start seeing more and more as well as better and better synergy there is also a tiny thing we might look at as we go past each of the specs which is the possible synergy that these covenant legendaries and legendaries together might also have with the new shiny tier set this is going to rise the value of your stocks for your spec even more if you happen to have this good of a synergy not just with two legendaries together but also with the new tier sets you will be able to have which is also going to be more important than normal because these tier sets will be available not just to raiders but also to everyone else so it's going to be pretty important now we have to start as we pointed out with the weaker side in this list and we are starting with not one but two so all of the dps specs for death knight why is the situation so bad let's start with the worst one of the two which is unholy death knight now the problem of both frost and unholy is the same which is the fact that their covenant legendaries are poor they are weak they don't really do that much for most of the time both of these specs have settled for staying necrolord but it's not that abomination limb is that powerful of a covenant ability when it comes to just pure sheer damage the real problem and why unholy is at the bottom and not frost is because this thing right here this is not something you will be able to have my dear unholy players uh, what unholy players would have wanted was being able to use deadliest coil and frenzied monstrosity together if that was possible then they would have been much higher in this ranking but unfortunately they are tied to using one of the covenant abilities which are at the moment poor for dk so that's why they're not really gonna shine too much as far as covenant synergy with your other legendary is concerned frost dk is in the same situation i haven't put them as low as unholy simply because they don't have that great that amazing of a possible synergy that they could have gotten like unholy if they could if they only could use two other legendaries rather than being forced to use a covenant one also another thing worth pointing out which is why they are not as low as unholy is that the tier set of frost 
They can now use Remorseless Winter, which they could use before as a legendary 4 Mythic Plus. The 2 piece set bonus is going to synergize with Remorseless Winter, as well as the 4 piece set bonus not really being tied to a legendary, but just being a straight up buff to Killing Machine makes it a little bit better. So that's why Frost is slightly ahead of Unholy, but they are still pretty bad, both of them, when it comes to synergy in their legendary options. Another spec right above both of the DK specs, which isn't that higher, is Fury. Now, why is Fury in this position? We want to be seeing, like we saw the Death Knights, Fury and Arms being next to each other, because Arms will have some better ways to, to synergize the legendaries. Fury doesn't. Fury hasn't really got a real strong standout single target legendary to the point that they pretty much went with the same legendaries in both activities, both Mythic Plus and Red Encounters. They both just went most of the time with the Elysium Might legendary, which is the Covenant specific legendary. So it might seem at first glance that they are at an advantage here, because if your best in slot legendary is already the Covenant one, which you are forced to use, you are at an advantage. It means you won't lose out on possible great combos like Unholy will. The problem is that outside of that legendary, Fury doesn't have too much. They can follow it up with Signet of Tormented Kings, which was already their previously used AoE legendary, so it's not really going to do too much in single target. And in single target itself, they are lacking a little bit. They do have their tier set, which is going to heavily empower their Raging Blows. The only hope you can say for Fury Warrior to be much better than it currently looks is if Will of the Berserker is going to have a standout performance now that you can take into account the two-piece and the four-piece set bonus being around Raging Blows. Because now making Raging Blow have a chance to proc Recklessness is going to work very well with this legendary. So perhaps while it looks better on the surface, Fury might have some possible extra avenues to work nicely in single target. In AoE is not as bad. In AoE they can just pair together their previously used legendary, which is Signet of Tormented Kings, and their currently used legendary, which is Elysian Might, and do just fine. It's just their, their current unknown setup for single target that makes them feel a little bit disappointing for the moment. Another spec which is a little bit on the disappointing side is Enhancement. So Enhancement Shaman has some pretty split options when you go for legendaries. You have Doom Winds, which is a very good Mythic Plus legendary because it has a one minute cooldown, so you can use it very often for all the different packs in Mythic Plus, so it's very nice. And then in Red Encounters, they have Witch Doctor's Wolf Bones for their, for their heavily reduced and stronger cooldown. This is very nice because this is what their tier set is going to be about. It's going to be about Feral Spirits. It's going to be about spawning more of them, and it's going to be about giving you more resets of Storm Strike. So it's very nice. It's very synergistic. So together, it's going to go very nicely. However, there is the problem of what about the second legendary? What about the Covenant legendary? This is a problem because Enhancement of the three Shaman specs is the one that has the weakest of the Covenant options, the Covenant abilities. They do have a little bit Night Fae for Seeds of Rampant Growth to give them more Feral Spirits its cooldown, which is already getting to a near permanent status as it is, so that's pretty much the only decent pick they can have, but beyond that one, they don't really have much else. So that's mainly just a problem for enhancement, the power of their Covenant Legendary. This is going to be something we will see multiple times. It's basically going to decide whether or not your spec is looking very good or not as good based on how nice are your Covenant Legendaries, because since you're forced to pick amongst one of them, it really has to be a good one. Otherwise, otherwise it's going to drop the value of your combination of legendaries by a lot. So that's the current status of enhancement. Similar to enhancement, not as bad, but clearly not as good as its brother and sister specs in Rogue is Outlaw. The problem with Outlaw, after getting battered by the addition of the AoE cap being lifted for pretty much every other melee spec outside of them who still have an AoE cap on their Blade Flurry, their other problem is that unlike what we will see for Subtlety and for 
assassination, they don't have as much of a standout legendary when it comes to covenant abilities. They can still basically wiggle between the Kyrian legendary, resounding clarity, or the Necrolo legendary, that spike just fine but it's just it's just it's just not as good as the other two rogue specs they can still use as they are already using pretty much for all content for pve at the very least they can still use celerity it's just that it it lacks it lacks an addition if you have to go and look at the covenant legendaries there isn't really much that fits this legendary then you look at the tier set and the set bonuses also don't really have anything that synergizes too well. It is likely still that Celerity plus Resounding Clarity is going to be just a, a nice combo. Nothing too special, but still very solid. So it's not as bad of a state as the specs at the bottom, but not the best it could be. Let's just say that. After Outlaw, we have the Hunter specs pretty much right in the middle of the melee specs. It's Survival. Survival has been getting some amazing tier set bonuses, which are one of the first in lines possibly being nerfed, given how strong they are. Their main, their main thing is that they can use, and they are currently using, Wildfire Cluster for just about everything. The main deficit for Survival is that their Covenant options are not even that bad, because Kyrian with Pact of the Soul Stalkers or Ventir for Pouch of Razor Fragments are both decent, they're not bad, but again, there isn't really too much synergy. The Kyrian Legendary is just giving you 10% more crit, and that's just about it. And then the Ventir one still has the problem that is attached to Ventir. I said before that Blizzard was pushing a lot this idea of trying to move Hunter to Ventir for a stronger single target. They have been buffing kill shot by quite a bit, and then they release this pretty powerful Legendary, so it might still work very well. But at the end of the day, as far as double legendary combo there isn't really too much synergy they would have much rather gotten other better and more synergistic legendaries together with their wildfire cluster unfortunately they can't because they have to choose one of the covenant ones so it's just not as effective for survival then we have arms warrior which i have put ahead of fury by quite a bit simply because as pointed out fury has the option to pick elysian might the kyrian legendary just like arms they are the same in that regard they both want to use this legendary there is a difference though that in single target arms warriors do have a pretty strong legendary already which is enduring blow it's basically what fury is missing so now you will be able to use enduring blow together with elysian might in single target or Elysian Might together with Signet of Tormented Kings in AoE. So they do have the option based on the content they are clearing. So that's pretty much the entire reason as to why they climb a little bit higher than Fury has. Then we go over to the top. So the, the, the better synergistic Covenant legendaries together with the normal legendaries for the remaining specs, starting with Windwalker Monk. So Windwalker Monk has a one standout legendary they have been using for pretty much the entirety of the expansion, which is Invoker's Delight. And nobody has really been able to move them away from In Invoker's Delight. After all, they are all about their burst windows. This is going to heavily strengthen their burst window whenever Juen is out, so it works very well. What is very good about Windwalker when we talk about synergy is that they can still use the extra Necrolord Covenant Legendary Bountiful Brew for extra passive AoE effects thanks to the reset chance of Bountiful Brew. Not that Windwalker was already weak in AoE, of course, but this is just going to make them even stronger. What is also going to be very good for Windwalker is the option to use Call to Arms, because Windwalker moved away from Kyrian to go Necrolord. Now they can freely respec amongst the Covenants, and Call to Arms allowing you to summon Juan for 12 seconds is a direct synergy with Invoker's Delight. This simply means that because you're using Invoker's Delight, you will also get 33% haste for 20 seconds when you are using your Kyrian Weapon of Order ability, because you are using the Call to Arms Covenant Legendary, which is going to summon Juan for 12 seconds, which is going to work with your other legendary so on top of already being in a good spot on top of already having a pretty good legendary for the covenant they are already in necrolord for aoe they even have a possible return to kyrian when it comes to single target when it comes to boss fights or perhaps burst heavy burst centric builds so this is our first quite good synergistic 
spec that we can have in this list. After Windwalker, we have our top five. At the fifth spot, we have Havok. Havok Demon Hunter is getting to this point because they are already using Burning Wound as their main standout legendary. They have quite a few others between Dark Lair Boon and the Medallion for Mythic Plus for AoE, but more or less Burning Wound is their most used legendary. The good thing about Havok is that while they can stay Night Fae to use Blazing Slaughter and continue their normal AoE synergy. What they can also do is go Ventir. More and more Havoc Divon Hunters have been going Ventir simply because it's more single target damage, simply because the Covenant ability also allows them for more single target. What is going to happen is that now that they have to use, if I mean, if they want to use two legendaries, they have to use a Covenant one. What happens when you go Ventir is that you can use Agony Gaze. Agony Gaze is essentially going to give your Sinful Brand, your Ventir ability, much higher uptime thanks to the fact that you can now use two legendaries, therefore pair together Agony Gaze with Dark Lair Boon. Dark Lair Boon, giving you a chance to reset your I Beam, is going to give you a much longer duration on your Sinful Brand when you're Ventir. So they still have their synergy and their good results in Mythic Plus, and also the option to go Ventir for more single target and to use the Covenant Legendary for Ventir. So it's a very similar type of synergy as Windwalker that we just went by. Now, as for the top four, we have the two remaining specs of Rogue. We left over Outlaw at the bottom long ago, so now we have Assassination and Subtlety. The reason why they are this high is because they are one of the first specs that have the Covenant Legendary as one of their legit strongest available legendaries, which is Obedience. Obedience, which also has already been nerfed uh, once, but it is still very effective. For Subtlety in particular, it is so effective that they continue to use it anyways. They have completely benched their old top legendary, which was Finality, just to use Obedience. So it's pretty obvious that now that they can use two legendaries, they can simply stay Ventir, continue using Obedience, and then have the pick of the litter of the remaining legendaries they want to use. Most likely that's going to be Finality, which was their previous best legendary. So it's a very good situation for Subtlety to be in. For Assassination, it's not quite as good, because Obedience, while still being one of the best, it is still not the best. So Assassination would have still rather used other legendaries together. But even when they are forced to use Obedience, that is certainly not going to make them feel bad. Because Obedience is still very nice for Assassination. So they can still use Zoldic Insignia for Mythic Plus and for multi-dotting Mythic Plus packs. And they can go back to use Doomblade or Dashing Scoundrel for raid encounters for single target while supported by obedience when they are Ventir. So that is why the two rogue specs make it in the top four. Now that you have seen what does it take to get this high in this ranking, it is no surprise to say that the second place taken by Feral is for the exact same reason. The best, currently best legendary for Feral is Celestial Spirits possibly even more so than how good obedience is for subtlety. Pretty much everyone and their sisters is using Celestial Spirits for Feral Druid. I pointed this out tons of time that Feral, this expansion, has pretty much been bailed out by Convoke the Spirits, by the burst granted by Convoke the Spirits. Celestial Spirits, the legendary for Night Fae, makes it even better, makes it available even more often, so this is going to work very well for Feral. And once you have your Covenant ability as your best in slot, as pointed out, you can then choose freely how you want to gear yourself up. In the case of Feral Druid, they can take Drought of Deep Focus if they want to go for more single target, and they can take Circle of Life and Death or Frenzy Band if they want to go for more AoE, Mythic Plus, Multi-Dotting, etc, etc. Now, they aren't the absolute best they could possibly be because it's not that the tier sets are focusing or synergizing too much with these legendaries they will be using very likely, so it's not basically a perfect setup for Feral, but it is still for now one of the better ones for Melee DPS. The only one that gets ahead, but to be fair it's much closer to a tie, is 
Retribution Paladin. Retribution Paladin is here for the same reason. Retribution Paladin is here because their best, standout, by far strongest legendary is Divine Resonance for Kyrian. Which means once you have your Covenant legendary as your best in slot, you can now choose for the non-Covenant legendaries whichever you want based on the situation. So you want to do AoE, you want to do Mythic Plus, then go back to using Tempest of the Lightbringer. You want to go pure single target, go back to using Final Verdict. That's how the synergy works for Retribution Paladin. The reason why I am saying they might as well be tied with Feral is because Retribution, much like Feral, doesn't really have too much synergy on their tier set either. So there is really nothing within the set bonuses of the Paladin tier set that is synergizing with Divine Resonance or synergizing with Final Verdict or with Tempest of the Lightbringer. So it's not that the tier sets are making these combinations even stronger. It's just a very nice power by default, just like the Feral Druid case. So now we have the entire list of the melee DPS specs. We started all the way from the bottom with specs that did not really have good synergies on their Covenant legendaries, which is crucial since you are forced to choose between one of them. If your option, if your pick is garbage, then the entire combination of legendary is just going to go and crumble. And then as we made our way towards the top, we started seeing more and more synergy between the Covenant legendary you can use and the options you have amongst all of the other legendaries available to you. The current situation, as we pointed out, you have both of the Dagger Rogue specs, as well as Feral Druid and Retribution Paladin being at the top. Then below them you have Havoc, Windwalker and Arms also being in a pretty good situation. You have Survival, Outlaw, Enhancement, not really having too good of a synergy with their Covenant Legendary while not being too bad. It is still not too great. The only question mark as pointed out is Fury. Fury who is going to get tons of synergy with the Regime Blow on their tier set bonuses and having also a specific Legendary that is going to synergize very well with that setup except for the moment it's a trash Legendary nobody uses so we're still not too sure whether or not this power is going to work out nicely for Fury. If it doesn't, that is the place they deserve to be, quite towards the bottom, because while having decent, pretty good even, choices for AoE, for Mythic Plus, when it comes to single target, if that type of synergy doesn't work out, it's actually pretty bad. Okay, now we have done the entire list for the mini DPS. What is going to come after this, obviously, what a surprise, is going to be the ranged DPS, the tanks and the healers to see how everyone else is shaping up with their synergies within their legendary picks. For now, we can stop here. However, thank you guys, as usual, for watching the video. If you want to start or continue supporting the channel, you can leave a like on this video. You can comment down below just how excited or perhaps just how doomed you are for your spec when it comes to the power of your legendary combinations, as well as subscribing to the channel, but only, of course, if you are playing a melee DPS spec. See you guys soon, and in the meantime, I had to go pee before I even started recording this video. My god, my blood there is dying right now.